All right, so let's go into the court class here. And we're going to add a method here. And we're going to call this method start match. And this method, well, as the name suggests, uh, is responsible for actually starting the match. So making the ball move, spawning the ball, uh, randomizing its direction, and then making it move, resetting the paddles uh, to the center position, uh, resetting the score and stuff like that. So let's go in here and say, hmm. well, first of all, let's create a new field in the constructor here. We're going to say, um, a field named is match running. We can do it down here. Is match running. And we're going to initialize that to false. And when we call the start match method, we're actually going to set that to true. Now we also need to spawn the ball or basically set its um, velocity to random values and make sure it's in the center of the screen mm, because once a, a match ends and we want to restart it of course we need to reposition the ball to be in the center of the screen so um, let's create another method here directly beneath the start match method let's call it spawn ball and it's going to be private so it's prefixed with an underscore and let's say this ball velocity equals, and then we're going to set that to an object where the X property is randomized. We're going to use the random function for that. And it returns a value between a random value between zero and one. So if the value that is generated is larger than 0 0.5, we're going to set X value to one otherwise we're going to set it to minus one and the same thing for the y value whoops there we go and that should be fine mm, also we need to reposition the ball So again, we need to set it to half of the canvas width and half of the canvas height. Oops. Canvas. There we go. And we also need to set its speed because it's been accelerating all this time um, if we already started a match. We need to set its speed back to the min speed. And since min speed is a static property of the ball class, we can just access it like this. All right, so after setting the is match running flag to true, we're going to simply call the spawn ball method. Um, also, we want to call the reset method of our scoreboard as well as um, the reset methods of the paddles that we implemented earlier. Oops, right paddle reset. And we also need to set the round, the current round of the scoreboard to one, because whenever we start match, I start a match, uh, of course, uh, it's going to be the first round. Technically, we could uh, include that in the reset method, but yeah, whatever. We're just going to reset all of the scoreboard values back to their initial values and then uh, set the round property to one. Okay, now that we have a start match method, we need a way to call this method and what we're going to do is we're going to add a button 
actually it's not it's not really a button in in terms of HTML so it's not going to be an HTML tag uh, it's just going to be a, a rectangle that we render with some text on it and uh, if the player clicks it um, the start match method of the chord should be called actually for now just to test things um, let's also make it possible to just start the game by pressing space pressing the space bar um, so let's go into the constructor of the tennis game class oh there it is here in the constructor Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to define a rectangle for the button. Um, but first, let's keep things simple and check for a button press. So, document. Um, there's an event for that that we used earlier, which is key down. Uh, pass a callback function here. It should be called then if the uh, event is raised and then let's say if the key is equal to and I'm using the uh, type safe equality operator here it's equal to an empty space or it is equal to the word space uh, again it's really depends on the browser and stuff. I think if we do it like this, it should work for most common browsers. Uh, also, we need to check if the if the um, game is not or, or if the match, <clears throat> excuse me, if the match is not already running. If it's already running, of course, we can't uh, run, run it again if we can we can start it again so actually uh, let's see mm. we need to make uh, earlier we created here in the court class we created this field is match running we need to make that uh, available publicly so let's go here and say get uh, is match running and simply return the value of the is match running field. So now we have access to it publicly and then we can check for that here. So if the key that was pressed oh, held down is space and um, hold on, let me And uh, hold on. Remember, we need to assign this to uh, another variable here because we can't use this in in the function here because this will have a different value then. So we assign this instance of tennis game to a variable named that. And then we can use this variable here. So if the key that is pressed is space and uh, that dot court is match running if that is not the case yeah that's fine so in that case if that is true then we call court start match okay and that should enable us to start the match by just pressing space start game press space and the ball starts moving yeah and once it leaves the screen it does nothing because uh, we haven't implemented that yet but as you saw it uh, properly bounced off the wall uh, let's start again here actually there and this time it uh, moved into the other direction and for some reason the collision wasn't picked up right I think we made a mistake there let me start the game again 
yeah something is not right with the collision uh, let's see maybe we were a little too fast here when we implemented the ball class um, It also seems like it's a little fast. The ball, I mean. Sorry, I had to make a quick cut here. Um, two things. Um, the reason why um, the ball was moving a little bit uh, faster was because I clicked start game twice. Currently, there's no way to prevent us from Start, well, clicking this button multiple times and each time we click this the uh, run method of the game will be called and so basically we run the game uh, multiple times at once so every time we click uh, this this button um, the ball and the the player the pedal uh, will appear to be a little faster um, but we're going to get rid of that problem by simply not allowing to click uh, this button more than once. Um, we're going to get rid of that later. It's not that important for now. But uh, more importantly, um, there is a typo here in the rectangle class uh, in the bottom property. Here again, I typed height instead of height. There. And again, this um, caused uh, the value to be undefined and then the calculations for the uh, overlap um, for the collision detection didn't work right. So make sure that you actually fix this if you typed it uh, just the way I typed it. Uh, save again and now the collision should work if there's not some other error as well. Okay, so let me run. Click start game. Hit space, there we go, and now the collision is working. Maybe click run again, start game. Yep, it's working fine now. Let me just click run again, and now let's actually prevent the player from clicking start game more than once uh, to avoid glitches um, and actually what we're going to do is simply hide the button once it was clicked yeah let's go down to the start game function here and once we click the button we want to hide it so let's say document get element by ID And the ID of the button is btn minus start. Oops, btn minus start. And then we want to set the display property of the style to none. Save that run again, hit start, and it disappears. And now we will no longer have the problem that uh, we accidentally click it multiple times and have multiple instances of the game running. Actually, it's the same instance, but it's the run method is called multiple times, which, call, which causes the update method to be uh, called twice or multiple times. And yeah, that leads to all leads to all sorts of funny glitches. All right, so now that we got that sorted out, let's make it so that as soon as the ball leaves the screen, that the appropriate player actually gets a point. Um, for that, let's go into the court class. Mm, here. And somewhere here, here, for example, we're going to add a new method. And let's call it score point with one parameter that specifies which player should receive the point. And now say if player player index equals 
uh, player index dot player one. Then we're going to increment the player one score property of the scoreboard. Otherwise, we're going to increment the player two score property. Oops, like this. Now, if there's a winner, so if the winner property is set to something that can be evaluated as true, the so really anything other than zero in this case, um, then what, what do we want to do? Um, then the match is over. So we set the is match running flag back to false. Um, if there's not a winner yet, then what we want to do is proceed to the next round by incrementing the round property of the scoreboard and calling the spawn ball method again so that the ball gets reset to the center of the court and yeah the direction is randomized again things like that of course we need to also call this score point method um, so let's go back into the ball class here and remember here we checked if the ball in the update method we checked if the ball leaves the screen but we don't do anything in that case. But here, if the ball leaves the left-hand side, obviously that's a point for player two. So let's say this court score point player index dot player two. And same thing for the other if block here. Um, if it leaves the right hand side, then we want player one to score a point. And now save, run, start the game, hit space, and let's try to score a point. And there we go. We received a point. It's now round two. Let's avoid the ball now. Yep, it's working fine. Perfect. Let me save. All right, so uh, next thing I want to address is if I start the game and before I even start the match, I can already move. Um, I want to prevent that. Actually, I don't want anything in the game to be updated uh, before I actually started the match. So I'm going to go into the um, court class. Uh, should be this one here chord and in the update method first thing I'm going to check is if not this is match running so if the match is not running then I don't want to do anything so we're just going to return save run start game and I can't move perfect now I hit uh, space and now I can move. Perfect. Okay, so next thing is uh, we want to actually um, implement the button um, with which you can also start the game. So let's go into the tennis game class. And in the constructor, what we're going to do is we are going to create an instance of rectangle, store it in a field named start button rect, new rectangle. Really gotta be careful with those typos because they can really mess things up. Um, it's going to be, the position is going to be half of the canvas's width minus, let's say 60. Um, and the Y position is the height, this time spelled correctly, divided by 2 minus um, 20. 
and the width is going to be something like 120 and the height is going to be something like 40. Um, again, uh, hard-coded values, not very nice. You can store them as constants somewhere, preferably in the game settings object, uh, but for now that's fine. Um, yeah, so if the player actually clicks within that uh, re rectangle, uh, we want to also start the match. Um, so how can we achieve that? Well, there is a click event um, in the canvas. So what we can do is say this canvas at event listener. And like I said, the name of the event is click. We can add a callback function here like this. And then we can check if the mouse coordinates are actually within that rectangle. Um, let's first get the boundaries of the canvas. And we can do that using a method in the canvas called get bounding client rect. Oops. Get bounding client rect. It's a method that returns the boundaries of the canvas. And now we can calculate the mouse position in the canvas. So not the absolute mouse position, but the relative mouse position uh, in uh, relation to the canvas, like this. We can say uh, in this object here that we get passed from the um, when the event gets raised, uh, there's a, a property called client x, which is the mouse position, the x component of it. We're going to subtract the canvas bounds dot left, Whoop. and same for the uh, y component of the mouse uh, position. So get bounding client rect also returns an implementation or an instance of a rectangle implementation. And they use they have a similar thing going on here with those properties left top. Um, it's, it's implemented in a similar way. Mm, and we can use that, like I said, to calculate the uh, relative mouse position within the canvas. And now we can check if that mouse position lies inside the start button rectangle. We can do that like this. Remember that we uh, implemented a method named contains, which checks if a certain point is contained in a rectangle. And here we can just pass mouse X and mouse Y. So if that is true, and the match is not already running, We want to start the match. And that should be fine. But we're currently not rendering anything. So it, this works, but we don't see the button. Um, so we have to enhance the draw method a little bit. So let's see. Let's say if The match is not running currently, then we want to draw that button. And we can use the context for that, set the fill style to something appropriate. Um, in this case, actually, let's create a constant or a property in our game settings object. Mm. Let's call it button color. And let's use something like almost black. And also button text color. And there we're going to use something like almost white. Okay, now I'll go back into the draw method here. And now we can set the fill style to game settings dot 
button color. Then we can call the fill rect method and simply pass our rectangle here, the individual properties of our rectangle, x, y, width, and height. This time spelled correctly. Now, we also need to render the text on the button. So set the fill style to, oh, excuse me, to game settings dot button text color. Oops. Set the font to one of the two fonts that we defined. I'm going to go with small font and then call the fill text method. First parameter is the text that should be displayed. Let's say start match. And then we need to pass the position. Start button rect x. And I want there to be a little margin within the button. I don't want the text to be directly on the edge of the button. So I'm going to add a margin of 20 pixels. And same for the y. Um, and I also need to factor in the height of the, re of the button and divide it by two so that the text is vertically centered. And also some margin of about six should be fine. And I think this should do the trick. Let's save that. Run. Start game. And there we have a button. Um, if I press, press anywhere here, it doesn't do anything. And as soon as I click the button, nothing happens because I made a mistake. Contains is not a function. I probably misspelled it. Oh yeah, contain. I named it contain. Let's correct that. Let's change that to contains. Save again. Run. Start game. Click the button and it starts. Perfect. And now, actually, I think, if I haven't forgotten anything, we should already be able to win the game or lose the game. Let's try to win the game. Remember, we set the win score to 7, so as soon as we reach 7 points, we should actually win. And that's the final point. Yep, red player wins and the start button appears again because the match is over. I can't move because uh, is match running is set to false. And if I click start again, yep, we restart the game.